Uh, the Pentagon chief's remarks, he said Israel must shield civilians to win in Gaza. The U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said that, or he urged <coughs> Israel to protect civilians in Gaza. Some are saying that that sounds like a joke uh, when you kill 15,000 Gazans already, and just after one day uh, after the truce, the regime bombed 400 locations, 50 of that in Khan Yunis alone. Uh, not forgetting the bombing of UN-run schools and hospitals where displaced people were taking refuge. Well, it's interesting, this figure of 15,000, uh, because that's the same number of uh, bombs that the United States has been sending to the Israelis, uh, reported on antiwar.com uh, since the 7th of October. Uh, this is really a proxy war waged on the Palestinians by uh, the United States government, uh, by the Pentagon, by Blinken, by Biden. And uh, that, I think, it makes it absolutely clear, almost like exactly one bomb per person killed. And that's a, a low estimate of the number of people who have been uh, uh, massacred in this genocide. Uh, I think it's interesting what Netanyahu is saying, I, we will continue until the end. Now, is that the end of Israel? Because if he carries on uh, slaughtering people in Gaza, the entire world will turn against him and he might possibly even be attacked by Arab countries. And also, I noticed today uh, the Hamas leader is saying the international community is responsible for the resumption of this genocide um, a couple of days ago. And actually, I would go further than that. I don't think it's the international community because in a way there is no international community in terms of uh, the UN Security Council because the US is constantly vetoing it. Uh, actually, this is really about Britain and the United States. Even the French, uh, Macron has come out for a ceasefire, permanent ceasefire. Uh, the British people want a permanent ceasefire. That's obvious by the demonstrations that have been taking place in London and in provincial cities like mine here in Bristol today, uh, as well as in the United States. The, the, the majority of the populations want to see a ceasefire immediately. But what you have is uh, the Anglo-Zionist empire's deep state in America and Britain mainly uh, who are backing this genocide. And let's also remember that King Charles is a big part of this. He uh, made the statements uh, saying that the Hamas was a terrorist organization right from the start. He should never have done that as the head of state. You have to stay out of politics, but he decided not to. And so you have this deep state war, war machine. Many. British and Americans feel that their governments are no longer serving their interests, where well, they're also causing uh, trouble abroad. And this Greater Israel project, uh, I think it's fair to say, if, if Netanyahu wants to continue to the end, uh, quite exactly what that end is, he, he's saying it's getting all the hostages freed and it's destroying Hamas. Well, you cannot destroy Hamas. I have news for him, because Hamas is the spirit of the uh, Palestinian people's right under international law to self-defense. And anybody that calls Hamas a terrorist organization, as the British government have done, uh, is failing to recognize that the 1.7 million people who've now been displaced, the 2 million people uh, now almost in total, have no right to self-defense. So actually, if you don't believe they have a self right to self-defense, then you are a terrorist, I'm afraid. So there's been a lot of misuse of this language. And I think we're going to have to see the beginning of war crimes trials, even if they are in absentia, because countries can get together now and have these trials uh, to make sure that all of the Israeli leadership and those that have backed them, uh, such as the British leader, Richie Sunak, who's uh, given his support for it, uh, will be, cons you know, if they arrive in those countries in the future, they will immediately be arrested. So I need think we need to see start, you know, not don't rely on the international court or the UN. Countries need to start actually holding these uh, in absentia war crimes trials now. That's right, Mr. Gosling. Uh, uh, Mr. Katz, uh, as Mr. Gosling mentioned, uh, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, uh, just uh, in a recent press conference in Dubai, he said that Israel will not enjoy security if it continues to kill Palestinian civilians. First of all, uh, isn't this a bit too late? At least 15,000 people have been killed so far. And second, are we seeing a change in stance from the French government, or is there a realization that Israel has gone too far? Um, I, I, I tend to, I, I tend to, uh, to think at, at any rate that uh, Western political elites are on the same bag. Uh, it's uh, they are all. Um, backers of Western uh, imperialism, 
uh, of uh, support for uh, colonization. And uh, they themselves do not have a very uh, glorious uh, history of, uh, uh, of uh, dealing with uh, indigenous peoples in Africa, in Asia, uh, and elsewhere in the world, including Latin America. Uh, I tend to think that uh, Macron has come to the realization that he himself, as well as other leaders, as Mr. Gosling pointed out, could themselves uh, down the road uh, be formally accused of complicity uh, in uh, aiding and abetting uh, genocide and, and war crimes. There's no statute of limitations on uh, acts of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. And as a matter of fact, a consortium of lawyers in, uh, in Canada recently served four uh, Canadian government ministers, including Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and uh, Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie J Jolie with legal papers, advising them that uh, there may uh, be uh, a call uh, for the International Criminal Court to investigate them uh, on the, the basis of, uh, the, of possible uh, complicity in these uh, crimes that are taking place in Gaza. So, uh, as as far as people, as far as the uh, um, Israel's, um, what I refer to as a proto-Nazi uh, coalition government, um, they themselves may uh, may face the same type of uh, of formal accusations and perhaps even. Uh, uh, arrest warrants uh, served on uh, served on them by the uh, International Criminal Court, even if Israel is not a signatory to the uh, uh, to, to to the Rome Statute. Um, you know, when I look at what is happening in Gaza, to me, uh, Gaza is the Warsaw Ghetto of 2023. The only difference being that, whereas in uh, the Warsaw Ghetto, the Nazis of the Third Reich uh, indiscriminately killed Jews, defending their integrity and dignity. Uh, in this case, it's the Zionist, uh, the Zionist Wehrmacht, I will call it, uh, annihilating uh, Palestinian civilians in Gaza. So Gaza is the Warsaw Ghetto of 2023. That's right, Mr. Katz. Uh, Mr. Gosling, before we wrap this up, uh, more than uh, the news just came in, more than 1,300 doctors and medical workers across the U.S. have signed a letter spearheaded by humanitarian group Med Global. Uh, and considering all these mass pro-Palestine rallies across the world, especially in the U.S., U.K., uh, Canada, uh, Germany, and France, uh, nearly on a daily basis, why isn't the government listening to their own people? Uh, and what is the meaning of a democracy in these countries? Well, it's a good question. Here in Britain, we've had something like a decade-long campaign uh, uh, by the Israel lobby uh, using millions of dollars uh, and millions of pounds to bribe their way into uh, big organizations like the British Labour Party, as Al Jazeera squirreled out uh, in their investigative documentaries. Uh, so what's happened is the entire political class of the major parties in Britain have been uh, occupied by the Israeli, uh, the Mossad, um, in, it, because I think they were contemplating doing this kind of thing well beforehand, and they knew that the Britain uh, might well be in opposition to it. So the Labour Party in Britain has been completely neutered by this, and the removal of Jeremy Corbyn and many, many of his allies uh, several years ago, uh, and the undermining of him by his own party, this was part of Israel's uh, pre-war plans. Uh, so, I mean, what they've done is they've started to normalise genocide now. This is the idea is we're supposed to see this day after day on our television screens. But the question is, what is it really about? What's the agenda? Why the killing? And I think it's pretty clear that uh, the, uh, you know, listening to the Neturi Carter and other Orthodox Jews discussing this in London and in New York, is that the current, the use of uh, the entire uh, Jewish uh, meme, we are Jewish. Well, clearly, Netanyahu is not uh, one of God's chosen people. He's, he's doing mass murder. 
the doctors who are saying what they're saying uh, are absolutely right. We've seen uh, uh, something like 120, 150 aid workers killed. We've seen roughly 200 doctors and nurses killed. We've seen about 80 journalists killed so far. Something like five, six, seven thousand women and children killed. Uh, all in this attempt to so-called destroy Hamas. Well, it's obviously nothing to do with that. What they're really trying to do is to create a pseudo-religious war uh, between the Zionists, who are the Kabbalistic Jews, if you want the Gnostic Jews, this is an infiltration of Judaism, uh, overturning their true traditions, and they're trying to have a war with the Muslim world. That's what they're really trying to kick off. And the danger is, because the superpowers are also uh, in there, the Americans obviously, and the Russians most definitely in the area, the Chinese warships nearby too, that this could drag us into a third world war. And I think that's actually the aim here is uh, the plot to cancel God, to actually discredit these, uh, particularly these Abrahamic faiths. And that's actually what they are. They're not Jews at all, in my view. They're nihilists that uh, are part of a uh, almost a kind of doomsday cult in uh, a nuclear armed one as well, by the way. That's right, sir. On that note, I would like to thank Mr. Bruce Katz, co-president of Palestinian and Jewish Unity from Montreal, Canada, and also Mr. Tony Gosling, investigative journalist from Bristol, England. Gentlemen, thank you for your time and knowledge, sir.